Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have a 1v1 on Simoski Winter. Our heroes today are going to be once over playing for the Soviets, and his opponent is going to be Dumas. Dumas. Playing for the Germans. So once again, this is from the Sunday Night Fights Season 5 tournament, round of 128. And I am in a little bit of pressure, going to have to cast these very quickly, because on the 12th of November we are going to be hit with a patch, which means it'll break all these replays and I won't be able to cover them. And, well, I want to cover them all, at least for the round of 128. So anyways, a little bit more of the players. Uh, we have Once Over being the highest ranked player in this matchup. He is currently ranked around the 200s for both his Soviet and German, so, you know, decent player. And the seating is uh, once over, is seated 29, and Dumas is 100. So a little bit of a mismatch there, but, you know, there's always upsets that could happen. But hopefully we'll have ourselves a good game in this matchup right now. So anyways, uh, build order-wise, uh, Dumas got himself tier 1 and got himself Grenadiers, so... The usual. Now we see the pioneers for Dumas running towards the house while once over also sent his combat engineers. Combat engineers do have the advantage of not having to walk through endless snow. So the pioneers do not make it into the house and are now having to trudge along the heavy snow, moving very slowly and getting shot in the back by the combat engineers. Pioneers for Dumas decide to move along their way and are gonna perhaps get to the very edge of this strategic point to capture territory and not keep on getting shot, and they do. So they're going to capture that point while the combat engineers simply jump out and take that fuel. Very popular, very uh, usual move that you see people Fresh doing in this map. Just heading towards this house as fast as possible, which is pretty nice. You can do the same kind of up here, but not, you know, not as effectively as you can do it in the southern fuel. So the combat engineers jump into the house to see more territory. And the Pios run away towards the victory point, capturing it. Actually, no. Where did the Pios go? Okay. Pios are up here. Okay. Well, they just simply ran away because they saw some comms coming. Well, anyways, for once over, he didn't get himself any tech. He just got himself conscripts and is now getting Molotovs. So, the usual strategy, the standard, you could call it. Three conscripts into Molotovs. Molotov going down right on top of these Grants up north. And very nice hit. Grants are still in the fire, not moving around. Dumas is distracted. Down goes one Gren. And now they're starting to move, but they took a lot of damage. Look at that health. Down to less than 25% health. And they are retreating. They don't lose anybody on the retreat, but with no triage center, they're are they are going to be in a lot of trouble. MG42 on the field for Dumas. We hear it opening up on something. It looks like it was a Grand Combat Engineer squad in the center of the map. They did jump into the church, denying the MG42 the ability to suppress him. MG42 jumps into the house, and it's going to get a Molotov in the face by these conscripts. Molotov lands on the house. I mean, well, it does land on the house, but it looks like... Hmm. Okay, and the conscripts decide to jump into the fire. Interesting choice, but I suppose it's fine. They are going to be on this side of the house, so they're not going to take any additional damage there. But I was saying that it looks like Once Over might have actually tossed it at the door, anticipating the MG42 to jump out from this direction. And oh, interesting choice here by Once Over. He selected his doctrine, and that is the Urban Defense Tactics, and popped a forward HQ right in front of Dumas's base. That is a very bold strategy. Very risky, because the houses are... Very collapsible, uh, so once it's uh, upgraded, it is being able to be targeted by anything, pretty much, and could fall down very quickly. But for the meantime, that is going to mean that Dumas is essentially cut off from the southern side of the map. Up north, we see conscripts engaging the Grenadier squad that got heavily damaged by their Molotov, forces that away again because two of their men fall down because they were very low in health. And the MG42 follows up to try to push away those conscripts. It will effectively do that. Burst goes off, conscripts run, second burst goes off and doesn't actually get the suppression effect, and the conscripts just simply walk away. So strategic point here in control from the conscripts. The conscripts do have act the actual buff if they are in this area. This buff, uh, let's see if it describes it. Uh, increase in defense and offense. Once again, I don't remember exactly what it says. If you guys know what it is exactly, let me know in the comments. But, uh, yeah, it's both defensive and offensive bonuses, so might be... 
I don't know, increased, uh, reduced, reduced damage taken or, you know, accuracy bonus. And, uh, probably increased accuracy. Pioneers over here on the southern cutoff point for once over do actually take the point, but the conscripts do push them away, so they will That's capture the, the point one. back. And the conscripts over here are just holding their ground against those grenadiers, just getting reinforced from the forward HQ. And, well, just simply staying there. Forward HQ also has some medics. The medics are over here, but it looks like the medics... Uh, I checked it out last time that I saw the, uh, the cast that I did for SOT 820. Um... It doesn't look like the medics actually activate um, out in, in a battle. They're not going to run and heal your troops while they're fighting. If they're outside of a fight, like right now, they will move in and heal up. Anyways, Grants over here down south do get pushed away by the conscripts. So once over, pretty much dominating the map right now with that bold move. Dumas has no response right now. He is getting himself tier 2. So he's probably going to be going for a half track, maybe trying to burn alive the units near the forward HQ. But I would also suggest a mortar. Mortar would help him out quite a bit. Put it in direct fire and start bombarding that house and collapse it. That is a heavy investment. It is 80 fuel invested for once over. So if that house collapses, well, that is 80 fuel down the drain. So far, however, it has actually paid for itself because it is cutting off Dumas from pretty much the rest of the map. He only has one map, I mean one sector in his possession that is giving him any additional income. And we now see the conscripts for once over just moving down to the south, capturing territory, making sure that everything is in his possession. And the Grenadiers for Dumas are just moving around the northern edge, MG42 defending the fuel. Wow, we still have that conscript behind enemy lines, capturing that point, denying it, or denying the fuel uh, the ability to get connected. Conscripts do manage to Ura past the Arc of Fire of the MG42 and are going to get right on top of it. Dumas decides to instantly retreat the MG42. He has nothing nearby to support it, although he did have two Grenadier squads. But with two Conscripts coming down upon that MG42, it was probably going to die. Conscripts now going to hold that fuel, and the other Conscript squad is moving to catch that other Grand squad that's capturing territory. But this four-man Conscript squad, yeah, they do turn around to support it because this Conscript squad is now going to get attacked by Grenz and the... Half track, the half track gets pushed, or well, pushes that is, and yeah. So yeah, that fight is going to be won very easily by Dumas, these concepts can't really do much about it. Uh, he is getting himself anti-tank grenades to be able to combat that, but it'll take a while and it's only going to be a small deterrent because as long as those grins are next to the half track, they're going to get mauled if they push on forward. Conscripts do push on forward to Ura and are actually going to throw an 18-8 on the half track, but again, I can't help but think that is not exactly the best thing because, yeah, look, the Conscripts are getting mauled and they do end up retreating. However, Dumas does not have a Pioneer squad up here to repair the half track. Pioneers are on the way, however. So it'll take a while and we have a light AT gun on the field for once over, so he could potentially kill the half track if it doesn't move. Tier 2 going down for once over, so an interesting choice considering he has the ability to call AT guns, but he is getting himself a Maxim machine gun. Maxim machine gun will probably go into the ha forward HQ, I would assume, or somewhere nearby, just to continue to deny this territory. But we'll see what once over has in mind. Combat engineers forcing on the retreat by the Grand Sub North, and the half track is currently getting repaired. Conscripts moving over north to the half track. The AT gun has moved up to the forward HQ. And is going to set up somewhere around here. Panzer Grenadiers on the field for once, I mean for Dumas. Should allow him to get a little bit more offensive. But uh, yeah, another 18-8 goes down on the half track. And the conscripts are getting mauled alive down to two men on the retreat. Throw a Molotov on the MG-42. The MG-42 does get cleared off. But with Pyos and Grenz next to it, it'll just simply get recruited. Panzer Grenadiers do push up the center to the uh, to the conscripts, but the conscripts are emboldened by their veterancy and the uh, buff by the forward HQ, and they actually kill the Panzer Grenadiers by themselves with a nice Your Molotov and you know a couple extra shots there. And the conscripts are now just simply going to get healed up by those medics, and those are a lot of medics. That's six medics from the forward HQ, or five, no six actually. 
So, uh, yeah, they actually have their work cut out for them right now because all these conscripts are injured, so they're running around chasing them, trying to bandage them up as they move. Maxim machine gun set up to cover the cutoff point to the Grenadiers. The Grenadiers do get suppressed, but they will actually cut off the point. Yeah, they do manage to get the cutoff before getting themselves pinned down. They actually are in light cover, denying or uh, delaying the pin effect. Maxim machine gun continues to shoot, though, however, and do a lot of damage. But they might actually get... No, there they go. Pin down. I thought they were going to capture the point, but they don't. AT gun is now on the ice, taking some shots at the half track, it looks like. Very nice. 18 8s go down on the half track. The AT gun taking some additional shots. And down goes the half track for Dumas. A very nice move there by once over. Managing to pick up that. And... Well... It's going to lose. Oh, no. Better C2 conscript squad pinned down, retreats, MG42 opening up on it, rifle nade lands on that conscript, but he actually makes it out alive, that veteran G2 kicking in and giving it that little bit of a defensive bonus that he needed, so very lucky there for one tober to keep that conscript squad on the field. So Maxim Machine Gun does push off that Gren and moves up to capture that point, but doesn't actually even matter because this point really only controls right now the left-hand side of the map. One tober has the entire southern side of the map and the right connected, so he has a direct route. Pack gun now on the field for Dumas. He's going to start bombarding the forward HQ. The Soviet pack, or I mean not pack gun, the Soviet AT gun or light AT gun is firing at the pack gun. Who actually wins that fight? Well, the pack is winning that fight right now. He actually shot two of the crew members. Could get uh, reinforced if once over desires. And he does have a conscript squad nearby. They could just simply push up to, you know, force it off the field. And there it goes. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying. The pack gun is a nice idea. It could actually start taking down that forward HQ, but a mortar would have been a better choice for Dumas, in my opinion, at least. Maxim machine gun moving up to the left-hand side. We have a conscript squad also capturing the fuel. The uh, MG42 did get left on the world. Two-man conscript squad is not ideal to capture it because it will obviously get cleared out. And we see a mortar half-track. Okay, well that's a final choice. Mortar half track chosen by uh, Dumas. He got himself the urban, I mean sorry, the uh, spearhead doctrine. Uh, once over is the one that got the urban defense. And we hear somebody burning alive. Who was that? Not entirely sure. He was screaming very uh, gruesomely, however. AT gun resets up on the other side of the house. Conscripts moving down to the forward HQ and gonna start getting reinforced. And yeah, I mean, once over is simply dominating the map in this situation. He has a very strong position there, but I don't know why Dumas is deciding not to do anything about it. Interesting, booby trap sector going down somewhere. Trap arming. Oh, it goes here. Interesting. What are your orders? So, if anybody comes into this point, they're going to get their butt blown up. There it goes. The uh, booby trap is set. Essentially like an artillery round, it's not like the Panzer Elite booby traps from before that they would uh, continuously blow up. It's just one one explosion. We'll see if it comes into effect right now. We see Pioneers and Grenadiers pushing forward to the point. One is going to run into the point and oh, ho, 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 very nice. Gets three other Grenadiers and one of the Pios in that explosion and forces it off. However, it is 100 munitions, so I mean it is almost as effective as a mine essentially, but at least it's, you know, it pretty much auto targets I guess you could say because if you lay down a mine right here it would have the same effect but if you laid it over here you know the infantry could walk over here and just simply ignore it the booby trap you know guarantees that it's going to set off at least and hit something right hand side Grenadier's trying to capture the victory, po victory point and territory conscripts over here trying to defend second conscripts but moving into support and the AT gun and mortars are starting to work on the forward HQ finally but we now have a T-34 on the field for once over we hear a mortar half-track go down for Dumas. His second mortar half-track pulls back. Conscripts and machine guns pushing up against the bunkers. Getting a little bit battered. And Dumas is currently, well, pushed back onto his base. Down south, we see the Grenadier squad down to one man getting shot by the Conscripts. Can he make it out alive? No, he doesn't. Second one retreats and second one goes down. So nice pickup there for once over. Less Grenadiers for him to worry about. And Dumas is now in a... Pretty much no win situation. Let's see if he throws in the towel or decides to tough it out for a while. Grens continue to push forward. So he only has a Grens squad, pack gun, and Pios, plus the mortar. The mortar's over here, not even getting repaired by the Pios. 
and Maxim Machine Gun over here capturing. T-34 on the field getting uh, fausted by those Grins. Needs to get some combat engineers over there to repair. But yeah, with his tier 3, he's producing another T-34, which one pack on on its own really won't do much against. And this Grand Squad might actually even die. No, he does retreat, so at least he has the option to Faust. And AT Gun and AT Gun battles. The uh, AT Gun does have the defensive bonus from the forward HQ. And the forward HQ has taken some shots. It's now down to about 75% health, maybe a little bit less. And uh, yeah, could potentially da fall quite, uh, quite soon. But yeah, that was basically the mistake from Dumas. It was a very bold move from once over that paid off in this situation. But if he had gotten himself a mortar or, like right now, the mortar half track and just bombarded the house, it would have eventually collapsed it and, you know, denied once over this ridiculous defensive position in front of his base. Because with the reinforcement, healing, and defensive and offensive bonuses, I mean, you can't really break that. So T-34 is on the field for once over. Second T-34 going over to the northern side. And Dumas is rebuilding his infantry. He has a Panzer Grenadier squad and another Grenadier being built. But I really don't see what he can do. Tayo's moving out, still re reluctant or, I mean, refusing to repair that mortar half track. I mean, if you have it on the field at least, try to keep it in the best shape you can. T-34 pushing forward, the pack turns around to face it, and it does take a nice shot at it. The T-34 stops, still in the range of the pack, will probably fall because it doesn't want to run away. Takes a shot at the half-track, but misses, and we now see an incendiary barrage falling on the mortar half-track. Not exactly sure why it fell there. It would have probably been better on the pack gun. The mortar half-track won't even take any damage from it, so... A little bit of a questionable choice. T-34 manages to make it out alive, and it backs off. We do hear repairs going down. Combat engineers repairing the T-34 down here. And Grenadiers pushing forward against the Conscripts. Conscripts are better in C2, and they don't have the defensive bonus, but, well, they don't really need it at this point. And they force that away. Grand Sober here on the Northern Fuel, capturing territory. Nothing on this side by one Sober to stop him. He does have a Maxim Machine Gun, which he does have reinforced. He does not have the Field Infirmary in his base, so these units are not getting healed up. They need to get close to the HQ. But yeah, that Maxim Machine Gun could potentially be used to, you know, cut off this sector of the map in a way, but, well, he doesn't want to do that so far. And Dumas pretty much has all his forces in his base. He has a bunker laid down, so he's probably going to be upgrading for a uh, field infirmary. I would assume. But, um, but yeah, not much. Third T-34 hitting the field for once over, so, I mean, Dumas doesn't really have much aside from the pack and potential Fausts, but... He doesn't even have a lot of munitions to be able to foul freely. And T-34 Maxim Machine Gun plus infantry just moving up to the northern side. Gonna force away that Grenadier squad, Grenadier retreating. And we hear the mortar falling down. Did it fall down to the AT gun? Yes, it did. Right at the edge of that uh, range of fire. And since it wasn't repaired, it fell very quickly. So T-34 going for a flank. Incendiary barrage falling right on top of the pack gun. And the T-34, well, the pack gun does move because it's being micro Mortar squad finally now for Dumas, really, at this point. Oh, well. More incendiary barrages falling all over the place. No, actually, it's the same one, sorry. <laughs> and T-34 is just circle strafing and everything. Gonna get fousted by those Grins, so to slow down its engine. But we now have two more T-34s falling down on Dumas' base, so, I mean, this is GG. It was GG a while ago. The pack actually gets destroyed, so no more anti-tank capabilities on the field for Dumas. T-34s just going to town on everything, shooting with glee and, you know, just killing everything. They actually destroyed this bunker. They could uh, even uh, allow the infantry to walk into the base, but, oh. This is game, let's see how long it takes for Dumas to leave. Or if it's gonna wait until the points come down. So, I mean, once over has triple cap Dumas for pretty much this entire time. And he is down to less than 100 points, 93 to be exact. Cindy Barrage falling right on top of the remaining infantry, burning them alive. T-34 shots flying at the infantry, getting still burned. They do run out of the fire, so at least they're alive. And the T-34s continue to chase. Mortar goes down. Grenadier squad, only thing left on the field for Dumas. He 
does not have anything else. The buildings are getting shot by the T-34. He continues to shoot Tier 2 because he's not Tier 1 because he wants to get rid of those Grenadiers. Tier 2 is producing its pack gun again, so the uh, T-34 T-34s could potentially shoot that if they wanted to stop it. It is about halfway. T-34s do move in to get a better angle at it. But they are focusing on the base sector, so the pack will actually hit the field and be a little bit of a nuisance. Grenadiers running down to the victory points down south, the infantry for once over, just having it themselves a little picnic here outside. With the medics, you know, there are medic gals, so they're, you know, chatting them up a little bit, seeing if they'll give them sponge bath, I suppose. And the pack gun hits the field, the only threat, and the T-34s rush to beat it. Pack gun taking some shots at that damaged engine T-34, doing a lot of damage to it, bringing it down to about 25% health, but down goes the pack gun, and... Dumas has nothing left. Ren's still down south. The one man on that pack gun actually decided to run away. Pio's getting called in, and that is by the, uh... By the pack gun. The pack gun gets recruit. So once again, the Nicidia Barrage falls right on top. Out of control goes that T-34. So small victory there for Dumas, down to 27 points. He did actually cap that victory point on the right-hand side, so he's slowing down the tick, so the game just doesn't end. The 34 shooting at everything they can, and we have a pile squad here by the Tier 2. T-34s continue to shoot, trying to take down that Tier 2. And two more T-34s getting produced for once over. He just wants to make sure he can kill everything. And we now see the conscripts rushing towards the victory points. Two other conscripts stop to meet those Drens. They say, well, nice try, but that's it. And, well, finally Dumas decides to throw in the towel. Or, no, actually he died. Yeah, he lost his, his last uh, building. So I think that was the uh, Annihilation victory. So yeah, game dragged on a little bit longer than it should have. A very bold move there by once over, but Dumas did not react properly to it, so it paid off in the long run. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.